The top reason I'm all in on SWE protocol is the programming language that it's built on. Move is the programming language created by Sam Blackshear, founder of Mistin Labs and SWE protocol. The story goes, in 2018, Mark Zuckerberg pulled together Blackshear and a few other developers at Facebook to create a stablecoin. This was years before Meta. Initially, it was called Libra, and it attracted some big players right out of the jump. PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, and Spotify were all anxious to be a part of this project. Facebook is pretty big, but it wasn't too big to fail. In 2021, the federal government would block Facebook's crypto ambitions, citing the fact that there was no regulatory crypto framework in place. Mark Zuckerberg tried to meet with Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell, but was completely ignored. Long story short, the project was dismantled. Fortunately, Blackshear and a couple of other guys from Facebook were able to form Mistin Labs later that year, and SWE Protocol had its mainnet launch in May of 2023. The thing is, Blackshear designed the Move programming language to be multi-purpose, highly scalable, secure, and with the implementation of Mr. SETI, faster than any other crypto. Take a look at this. SWE's total value locked in 18 months has surpassed $870 million. This is spread across multiple applications like borrowing and lending, decentralized exchanges, and thanks to a partnership with Ondo Finance, real world assets. SWE ranks 12th in stablecoin market cap according to DeFi Llama. 70% of that is dominated by a wrapped form of USDC. So it didn't surprise me when I discovered that Circle will soon be natively issuing USDC on SWE. And this will also come with Circle's signature cross-chain transfer protocol. With CCTP, SWE's programming language will be compatible with the same programming languages it was originally designed to compete with. Partnering with Circle right now is an absolutely genius move considering their rising influence in the stablecoin market and leadership under MICA's new stablecoin regulations. But stablecoins are just one use case, and it's one that will still take some time for people to get used to. SWE is working on another use case that should catch mainstream attention sooner. SWE and operating system developer Playtron have developed the SWE Play 0x1 handheld gaming device. This device will be Web 2 and Web 3 friendly. Using Anchor technology, it will support games from multiple marketplaces. Now, nothing has been confirmed. But Ubisoft and Epic Games are two names to watch for potential marketplaces. This is important too. Not all Web3 games are fully Web3. As a matter of fact, about 95% of them. What's happening is game state and game logic are being stored in two separate places. Your game state, i.e. accounts or assets, may be stored off-chain, while the dictating game logic, game mechanics, may be stored on-chain or vice versa. It's a system that works, but not well enough to establish a mainstream Web3 gaming market. Good news is, SWE Foundation and their research partner, Cornell Technical University, are working on a hybrid solution to that problem. Listen, traditional video game companies are making their way to blockchain. This SWE play could very well be the Game Boy moment for Web3. Now, Moose programming language inspired Zuckerberg to build his entire network on top of it. I would also argue that SWE represents the new era of multi-purpose commercially viable blockchains. When USDC is implemented across SWE's DeFi, gaming, and enterprise payments, it will become a juggernaut. And many have been comparing SWE's first year price action to Solana's remarkable run in 2020. Those comparisons I agree with. In order for SWE to reach Solana's $70 billion market cap, it would have to 17x from here, and that would equal a $24 SWE. In my opinion, I think a safer estimate would be anywhere between $11 billion and $15 billion for market cap, giving us a $4 to $5 SWE by the end of this cycle. As a matter of fact, crypto trader Torero Romero put the two charts on the same board for us 
and he highlighted Solana's run from $1 to $10. If Sui were to replicate that same run in the same amount of time, it could reach $4 before the end of next year. Don't think Sui can run that fast? Well, IBC pointed out in August, Sui rallied 115%, where Solana only moved 6%. This trend is continuing into September, where Solana is actually down 9%, and Sui protocol is up 50%. If you're talking transactions per second, Sui clocks in at 297,000, versus Solana's still very impressive 65,000 transactions per second. But be aware of this, Solana's circulating supply is 85% of its total supply, where Sui is still at that 27% range. This means that coming token unlocks will make holding Sui volatile. Another reason Solana was able to perform so well at that time was its wide range of applications. And I can tell you, Sui is on that same trajectory. For DeFi, I like Turbos Finance. It's their signature trading platform backed by Mistin Labs and Jump Crypto. For gaming, I like Blockus Gaming Studio. They allow Web3 game developers to create fully customized multi-chain Web3 games. When it comes to payments infrastructure, they partnered with the experienced Versal, formerly known as Six Clovers. They were founded by former PayPal guys Jim Nagin and Nas Kavion, and they've also received investments from Algorand and Chainlink. For NFTs, which I still consider a developing use case, I like the Blue Move NFT Marketplace. It's an NFT launchpad for Sui, and it's also compatible with networks that also make use of the Move programming language. They also have a token, which provides rewards and incentives for staking, buying and selling NFTs, holding the move token. You also get whitelist or early access to NFT collections and free mints. At the end of the day, I would suggest you to read more on Sui protocol. Remember, those token unlocks will make this a volatile hold. But I firmly believe the ceiling is very high for Sui protocol, and it's already off to a very hot start. On top of all of that, the move programming language was originally intended to support a network of 2 billion people. I'm willing to take a bet on what Mark took a bet on.